hey guys, today we're looking at a possible obstruction in the liquid line or in the TXV, okay? So the way you'd be able to tell, there might at least there's some type of an issue, is you look at the evaporator coil pressure, all right? So even if you're doing subcooling as a charging procedure on this or checking the charge, say it's a 410A, which would be the pink um, or the rose color, all right? Say you looked at the superheat, okay, and the superheat's very high, so you think, oh, okay, maybe I need to add refrigerant. So let's just use the instance of 80 PSIG. You run that in, it's about 22 degrees saturated temperature for 410A. That means that in the middle of the evaporator coil, it's 22 degrees. That is not good, okay? So the complaint you might have from the homeowner is, hey, I'm, I'm not getting as much airflow out of the registers as possible or as, as normal. Um, and it's just not cooling the house down very well. All right. So even if you do have the proper subcooling, okay, even if you do have the proper subcooling, if that uh, vapor pressure is lower, that is an indication of a possible restriction or the TXV is not opening, okay, or, all right, the filter is not clean, the blower motor is not blowing at its rate right capacity. Maybe the side of the evaporator coil is clogged. Um, maybe some of the registers are, are not open. So you want to take care of all of the easy things first. You want to make sure that you do have good airflow. The blower motor is pushing well. The registers are open. You've checked the filter. The filter's clean. You know, you're checking all of that, at that stuff. After you do that, if you're putting a refrigerant charge in, into the vapor line, and you're not able to get the vapor side to increase, then... Um, that might be a, a situation where you want to look at the TXV bulb. And what you can do is you can take the bulb off of the suction line. It's just clamped on. You can put it into a uh, cup of hot water. And when you do that, your superheat on this side should decrease. Okay? Because you're using a lot of refrigerant through the evaporator coil. All right? So if that does not occur, if nothing changes when you put the thermostatic bulb into a glass of hot water, uh, if the TXV bulb does not open up all of the way and your superheat still is very high and your suction um, saturation temperature is below freezing, that would be an indication of a bad TXV once you've ruled out all of the other stuff. Remember, the TXVs don't go bad very often. It's, it's all of the other stuff, the blower motor, you know, the filters, the, the clog on the bottom of or the side of the uh, evaporator coil. You know, that just happens over time with people not maybe not changing the filter. So check the easy stuff first. And, um, and it, if you're putting a refrigerant charge and your suction pressure is not changing, you're going to need to start investigating all the rest of the stuff. If you're putting extra refrigerant in and you're not able to get the suction uh, pressure up, you're, in, you're still going to be increasing in subcooling. You know, uh, if you're supposed to have 10 degrees of subcooling, say you have 225 PSIG, you run that in at 77 degrees on your uh, in the middle of your condenser coil, all right? And your actual temperature on the liquid line is 67 degrees. That gives you 10 degrees of subcooling. But if your evaporator coil saturation temperature is below freezing, the evaporator coil will will freeze if running for any period of uh, period of time. All right. So if this is the complaint of the of the of the building manager of the homeowner. Uh, check the easy stuff first, and then after you do the, those things and after you try to add some refrigerant in there, um, if that's not the case, then you want to start taking a look at that TXV. And just make sure that you defrost that evaporator coil uh, before, you, before you do any of this. All right, hope you enjoyed yourself. I hope that helped, and we'll see you next time at AC Service Tech Channel.